Mr. Hofstadt, for coming in. It is enormously courteous of you to come to the UK Parliament, and it's been easier to persuade you to come than some officials and financial government. So thank you very much for being here. Uh, and my apologies for being late. I, I was asked to see the whips about some of today's business on the meaningful vote. Um, <clears throat> I want to follow up on one of Mr. Wilson's questions on the Irish border uh, to get your view on what would happen in the event of no deal. If the UK did not put up a border, would the European Union require Ireland to put up a border? Yeah, the, in, in the case of a, of a, of a no deal, uh, then automatically uh, there will be a border. Eh? But the UK has made it clear it won't put up a border. But in Sorry? The UK has made it clear it won't put up a border. We'll have no they, 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 yeah, they have said in the beginning a smart border. But the EU... There's a border, eh? A smart the, border. Well, there's a border already, but the EU would, under those circumstances, put up a physical border. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, but no, we want, in any way, to avoid it. Yeah. Uh, and know, so our, 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 our <coughs> basic principle is we don't want it. That's also the reason why we want an agreement, yes. and we, uh, we pre you, you prepare yourself always for the worst scenario, but uh, that is not our thinking for the moment, no. and uh, we want to avoid it in any circumstances. And uh, so, but are you that's saying all that. so say, yeah, but what are you going to do when this is happening and this is happening? That is not the way uh, we, we are working, because that should be a very bad uh, uh, a, a bad starting point for the negotiations. But that's exactly what's being done by the attempt to draw up backstops. It's saying what will happen in it's the backstop. The backstop. The whole point of a backstop is what happens in the event that things don't happen. Yeah. So what I'm trying to establish is that in the event of no agreement, which is not impossible, and the UK does not put up a physical border, will the EU insist that Ireland puts up a physical border? Well, automatically, then there is a border. The question is uh, that for that we prefer the backstop option in that case. Okay. Maybe you can uh, to avoid the border from your side, then accept the backstop option. We, that we, could be also. No, we, we can avoid a border unilaterally. We can simply say we're not going to put up a physical border. Yeah. Okay. But you and could then also. The, and then would the EU insist that the Republic of Ireland did? No. I, uh, because if you wouldn't, then the whole issue has gone away. Because if you're not insisting on a hard border. No, we we're won't. not going to insist on a hard border. Who is the magical yeah. person insisting on a hard border? Yeah, but there, there will be still uh, not a regulatory alignment, for example, between okay. the north and, 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 and south. So we, we will have to deal with that problem. Yes, but we there's a reason why it is absolutely av to avoid that we have no uh, uh, no, no no deal. No, uh, that's to uh, for you unilaterally and, 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 and for us not only unilaterally to uh, avoid that we need to do something what we don't want to do. But you would have a choice not to impose a physical border in the event No, no, of no we have no choice. The border is the Okay, outer. so you would have no choice. So why the rules are the rules. We cannot change the rules. So, but we want to avoid that we have to apply that. And that is the reason why okay. you have, or oh, no, Mrs. May, and in the, this interview has to be in agreement with the backstop. So for us, if there is no, uh, the, the, the backstop assures that we have no hard border to install. Because the backstop avoids a hard border and uh, makes that there is regulatory alignment and customs arrangements as they exist today between Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic. Thank you. What you said is extremely important. You said that the EU would insist on a hard border with no agreement because the rules are the rules. But the EU, when it suited it, has not always stuck to that position, has it? Sorry? Well, I seem to remember that the Maastricht Treaty has a no bailout clause for countries uh, that get into trouble in the euro. Mm. But when it suited the European Union, the rules weren't the rules, were they? The rules were adjusted to meet the requirements of the time. No, I should so not. why are you so solid about the yeah. rules being I should not out? say that, uh, that we all the time change the rules. That's not true. The, 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 the stability pact uh, and growth pact rules uh, uh, are uh, fully uh, applied. Uh, and, uh, but in the, inside these rules there, uh, of the stability sure. and growth pact, uh, there is a, 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 a power a competence for the uh, European Commission. Uh, to say uh, when they are launched. We, we have done it. We have launched procedures against the uh, uh, member states 
uh, even big member states, uh, based on the, on the Growth and Stability Pact for Excess of Def uh, Deficit Procedure. It's not so true so that we don't apply the rules. So the rules were fully applied, were they? So ju just remind me, what was um, Italy's debt to GDP ratio when it joined the euro with these fully applied rules? Did it meet the market? Too, too high, but they, were, they, they have been put also under, under, uh, under, uh, uh, under, under, under procedures that were But it foreseen. didn't meet the rules, did it? No, sorry. No. Uh, the, so the, the rules were flexed. So the rules are the rules when the EU wants them to be the rules, and therefore it's saying these will be the rules because we want to impose a hard border. But the no. rules could be flexed in this area because, as you said in one of your earlier answers, the flexibility you represent a lawmaking body. There is more the flexibility that has been used inside uh, towards uh, deficits and, and, and public debts towards countries of the Eurozone uh, were possibilities that were foreseen in the rules of the Stability and Growth Pact. People, the, they, they didn't, the Commission didn't uh, go outside the rules of the Stability and Growth Pact. They have used the, the have flexibility foreseen in the rules these of the, the Stability and Growth Pact. These were the rules to join in the first place, which were much clearer. The Stability and Growth Pact does have an ability not to find countries. And as you will, of course, remember, when Germany broke the uh, deficit level, its fine was, was remitted. So there is a flexibility. In, rules in, in, the, in the Stability and Growth Pact, there is a flexibility. But and this was, flexibility has been uh, the, extended now uh, was, in the la latest was, changes of the Stability and Growth Pact. There was no flexibility in the No Bailout Clause. That was absolutely clear in the Maastricht Treaty. Yeah, but, and uh, then the, it, was, it was done through something that was meant to be that an actual disaster. Yeah, well, well, what is now your, your, your point, that we are too not, flexible in the, in, the, in the Growth and Stability Pact no, in, my, in, in a currency union where no, you are not part of no, it? No, my point is that you say to us that the rules are the rules and they must be applied, but I'm telling you that there is considerable evidence that the EU does not apply the rules when it's not Look, in its interest to. If you think so that a country is not following uh, the rules or that the European Union is not following the rules, there is always the court. And you can go to court and say the European Union doesn't apply its own rules and the European Union can be condemned to do so. That's a rule-based system. And that is exactly what we have in the Union. And the, the difficulty of this negotiation is a little bit the, the lack of recognition uh, from, from one side that it is a rule-based system that we cannot invent a relationship or partnership that go against these rules. It's a rules-based system when it suits the European Union, an amazingly flexible oh, that's when it's not true. That's not true. It's perfectly that's true. true. I have a lot of criticism for towards the European Union, uh, and, and, and so, but uh, you cannot say, oh yeah, there's a system that adapts itself when it suits uh, uh, one or other big member state. I presume. So did the Maastricht Treaty allow for balance? The Maastricht Treaty uh, said a lot of things, uh, and this Maastricht Treaty, I can tell you, I, I lived it as, as a Prime Minister of, of, of Belgium, has obliged us uh, to do, for example, the 60 percent I'm talking now about, about debt, uh, to, to do enormous efforts. So it's, 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 no it's rule-based. It said no bailouts, and that was overridden. Uh, the, the point is very simple. The EU makes rules, and it can make rules to suit circumstances if it chooses to. But by a voluntary decision, it is choosing to say that its rules are sacrosanct, when in other areas it's been much more flexible. And that this ought to be a part of a sensible negotiation rather than the EU simply saying, we will stick to rules which we haven't done in the past. Now, we, we, we stick to a, a, a rule-based system and we will not undo this rule-based system uh, with an ECJ who is, has the oversight of all this. Uh, during this negotiation, we will. We will we in, in this negotiation, in the, but it's been done in this in negotiation, parts. like in other negotiations, like in any negotiation that the European Union has with uh, uh, with uh, with another country. Okay. Uh, it's uh, that's, okay. Thank, thank you very much.